In this video, we now want to talk about identifying slopes and y-intercepts just from the equation. So we've been uh, finding slopes from graphs, tables, using the formulas. That means given some points. Uh, but now we want to find the slope and the y-intercept just by looking at the equation itself. So if you recall, our slope-intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b, where the slope is the number that's multiplied times x, and the y-intercept is the number that is added onto the end. Now, it could be a negative number, which means that it's going to show up as subtraction. So if you have a minus, it means the y-intercept is negative. If it's positive, the y-intercept is positive. If it's plus, the y-intercept is positive. All right, so just by looking at the first one, hopefully it's clear. The y-intercept, the slope is 3. It's not 3x. It's just the number that's multiplied times x. And the y-intercept b is negative 4. We could also write that as z, 0, comma, negative 4. All right, in the next one, in b, now we have an equation that uh, doesn't have an x term in it. And some students like to rewrite that as y is equal to 0x plus 6.5, because that helps them to see that there actually is an x term, but it's multiplied by 0, and that means that its slope is 0. You can also think of y equals 6.5 as the line, all of whose points have a y-coordinate of 6.5, which means it's a horizontal line, and we know the slope of a horizontal line is always 0. Its y-intercept in this case would be 6.5, and if we needed that to be as an ordered pair, it would be x is 0, y is 6.5. Third example. Now we come to some more complications here. The complication is because the equation is not in y equals mx plus b form. It's not y is equal to some number times x plus or minus something else. So we have to get it into that form first. That's our first job, is to get it into slope-intercept form, which means we need to isolate the y. And the way I'm going to do this, uh, in this case, there are, there are two different ways. First, I can add 5x to both sides. When I do that, on the left side, I'm still going to get a negative y. Watch out for the sign in front of the numbers. And on the right side, I can't add negative 2 and 5x. They're not like terms. 2 is a number. x refers to we don't know what. So you can't add them together and get either 7 or negative 2 and 5. You can't add them and get 3, and you can't get 3x. So the best we can say, and we're going to put the x term first, is that negative y is equal to 5x minus 2. Now, we're not done yet because uh, we can't leave that as a negative y. So I would either have to multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. It's going to multiply everything by negative 1. And when I multiply everything by negative 1, everything's sign changes. Negative 1 is the opposite function here. So I'm going to get negative 1 times negative y is y. Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And now my equation is in y equals something times x plus or minus something else form, and I can easily see that my slope is negative 5, and my y-intercept is positive 2, or the point 0, comma 2. Okay. 
All right, and I'm just going to change some of those colors so that the uh, the work we did to isolate the y stands out clearly from our results, which are the slope is negative 5 and the y-intercept is 2. All right, let's go on to the next examples, example 6. With example 6, again, slope is easily identifiable. It's the number that's multiplied times x. The y-intercept is the number that's added or subtracted. And so we can write that as b equals 1, or we can put the ordered pair for the y-intercept there. Next example, y equals 8. Again, this is a line. All of its points have a y-coordinate of 8. That makes it a horizontal line. And you know that the slope of a horizontal line is always 0. Its y-intercept will be 8 or passes through the point 0, 8. All right, in the next example, we're going to have to do something similar to what we did above. Isolate the y. We start by subtracting x on both sides. Remember, we can't subtract x for negative x, or we can't add negative x to negative 10. All we can say is 4y is negative x minus 10. Then we're going to divide everything by 4. Divide everything by 4. And it's important at this point to note that negative x over 4 is the same as negative 1 fourth times x. So hopefully that's clear. An example would be to find half of a number, we divide it by 2. Or dividing a number by 2, let's call that z, any number, divided by 2 is the same as half of that number. So hopefully you can see that negative x over 4 is the same as negative 1 fourth x. And then 10 divided by 4, we can divide the top and bottom by 2. And we're going to get negative 5 over 2. So from this, again, we can see clearly that our slope is negative 1 fourth, and that our y-intercept is negative 5 halves, or x is 0, y is negative 5 halves. Okay, so that does it for this group of questions. We're trying to identify the slope and the y-intercept just by looking at the equation. In some cases, the equation may need to be rewritten in slope-intercept form before we can actually do that. And hopefully it's clear from those two examples of how we might go about doing that. Right? And so we'll stop this video at this point.